thanks for joining me for this flow. Um, so I just first of all wanted to show you um, a diagonal pigeon seat. This is um, one of the seat shapes that my legs are in like a zigzag. Um, we'll be using towards the front of the mat and just to, because I'm a little bit lazy and forgetful, I wanted to show you it now in case you can't see it when we're, or it's not very clear when we're facing, when I'm facing the front. Um, so this is diagonal pigeon, the heels will shift to one side of the hips, if you need to you could prop the hips up on a block at some point, if haven't got a block you could use a book, a thick book. Um, yeah, if you need to release from it at any point you can also do that as well. Um, okay, we are going to begin this flow um, facing the top of the mat. You can be in any uh, seated position that you like, Japanese style or um, cross-legged. I'm going to be in a diamond seat because that's how we're going to start the flow. But it's up to you, you can get there in your own time. But when you're ready, just take a moment to close your eyes. And allow your awareness to return to inside. And initially just notice how you can become more connected to the ground beneath you. Whether that means noticing the connection to the ground beneath you or allowing your legs to be heavier or your sit bones to ground a bit deeper. Just notice how you can drop into the ground, into the earth. And then from this sense of grounding, just gently lift up and wriggle through your spine so that you can feel from this anchored grounding position that your spine is now free to grow tall. So from the stable foundations, we, are, we can explore a growth in many different directions. And then become aware of your breath. And we'll just take three deep breaths together to communicate with the nervous system and bring about a sense of focus. So let's start with an exhalation, emptying the lungs. And then let the inhale fill the belly, fill the ribs, fill the chest and the upper back. And then with control, exhale nice and slowly, just allowing the chest, the ribs and the belly to soften again. Good, two more like that, inhaling deep. And then exhaling with control, allowing the air to leave the body nice and slowly. Lovely, one more big breath in. And one more breath out. Lovely, and then slowly just lowering the breath into a comfortable rhythm. So a rhythm that feels sustainable. And it may be a different kind of breath to one you usually practice with. Something softer, maybe something longer, maybe something less audible, or maybe you want to fire up with an ujjayi breath, you know, that, a deep oceanic breathing. Notice what feels right and follow that. And once you feel connected to the breath, stay with that connection and just lower the chin to the chest. We'll start by sweeping the chin across the chest from shoulder to shoulder. And if it's comfortable, you might like to explore a full circle through the, the head. Be mindful if that feels compression 
in the vertebrae of the neck. If it does, you can just come back to the semicircles. If you've got tension gathered in your jaw, you can play around with opening your mouth wide. And I recommend that you just keep your eyes closed for this part of the um, warm up. So you're going to start to bring some movement into your shoulders and I'm not going to tell you how to move your shoulders, but you're just going to start to bring the movement into the shoulders and get really inquisitive so that your movement isn't about making a shape, it's rather about tuning into how you're feeling in your body today. So allow your movement to be like wriggles and with no particular um, agenda so that we're not trying to make a certain shape, we're just moving to feel. And even though we're in a kind of less structured movement, we're still facilitating the movement with the breath. So noticing where it feels good to breathe into and where it feels good to use the exhale to soften. And get really curious into small areas like wrists and fingers and palms and um, anywhere else that we can tend to overlook or slightly neglect but they're generally those places that kind of work continuously for us and you can change your seated shape if you want to you can explore through the legs you could come onto the back if you need to but just get into that sense of exploration of your body today. Okay, move, spend a few more breaths wherever you are and whatever exploration you're in. And then when you're ready, you're gonna arrive into the diamond seat. So take your time to get there. Once you arrive in that diamond seat, make sure that the feet are quite far away. So we're not in a um, Baddha Konasana, we're, we're in a diamond. So we want the feet quite far away, the knees are nice and heavy. If you need to be um, hips up on a block, you can, or, or a book. Okay, and then take a moment just to close your eyes again. Allow your inhales to begin from your pelvic floor. And then travel that inhale all the way up through the spine, through the shoulders, up through the neck and up through the crown of the head. Just feel how that changed your relationship to yourself. And then exhale, travel the breath all the way back down, down through the spine, down through the pelvis, down through the pelvic floor and into the earth. Lovely, and we we'll travel the breath up on the inhale. And then this time, exhale through the mouth. Good. We're going to take this into some synchronized movement together. When you're ready, open your eyes. Left fingertips come to the side and the right fingertips reach towards the sky on the inhale. As you exhale, take a lean in towards the left elbow. Sweep the right fingertips forward and round and place them to the right side. And then inhale, left arm reaches high. And then exhale, sweep it forward and round. I'm good. And we're just going to kind of sway from side to side a few times. Finding length through that side reach before you take it into the lean. Lovely. Good. And then lean all the way forward. You're going to slide your hands all the way up your legs and hold onto your shoulders. It doesn't matter which one is um, crossed forward. Take an inhale 
And then exhale, lean your torso towards the right and circle in this direction. So anti-clockwise direction. If you've gone the other way, it really doesn't matter. We're going to change direction in a minute. Pause in the centre. Inhale, lift the elbows. Exhale, separate them wide and then cross to the opposite shoulder. So opposite elbow on top. Inhale and exhale, circle the torso towards the left. Lovely, and then find the centre. And we're going to take um, ourselves into that diagonal pigeon that I mentioned at the beginning. So I'm going to shift my heels to the left side of the hip to the left, outside of the left hip. So I'm in a diagonal pigeon to the left. Okay, and then bring your fingertips forward of your knees and start just to lower one shoulder into the centre, bring it back to centre, other shoulder in towards the centre. And you may be here, we're just getting into the thoracic spine. So it doesn't really matter how low you're going. If you have the capability, then that's great. But otherwise, not stressing. We're just twisting through the thoracic spine. And it's almost like I'm shifting the weight from one hand into the other hand and then springing back up. My core is engaged. I'm pushing down through my knees so that my glutes are active as well. Lovely. And then slowly release. And as you inhale, lift up through your fingertips. And you've got a challenge here. You can place the hands to the ground or you can pick up through your knees and shift the feet forward. So you're facing the kind of left edge of your mat. And then from there, take the toes out nice and wide and start to circle through the ankles, through the toes. So spread the toes nice and wide, press through the ball and the heel of your foot. And notice how I'm letting my knees bend so that the, the movement from the feet travels up the legs and all the way into the hip socket. So the hip socket is moving around. And I've got this action that then starts to ripple up through the spine as well. So as my toes pull back, I'm leaning back. And as my toes point forward, I'm waving my heart forward. And, you know, you don't have to look like me, but... I'm just giving you guidelines for movement. If you want to, you can get your arms involved as well. I like to imagine that I'm like um, an octopus. I like octopuses. So I like to imagine that I'm an octopus and I'm kind of really fluid and my whole body is moving as one efficient unit. Good. And then when you're ready, you're going to shift the weight onto your sit bones, float through your toes, and take some random movements through the arms and the legs. Good. Lovely. Shifting, firing up through the core, and just getting everything active. Good. Pause. Land your right foot down, and then your left leg long. I'm not mirroring you, so um, you have to know which is your right and left. <laughs> okay, and then interlace your fingers around that right knee and just grow your spine nice and tall. Just let the hips open into this. Keep that right sit bone grounded. Okay, and then from there, we're going to take a downward dog towards the back of the mat. So my hands reach all the way to the back of the mat. My right foot steps towards the opposite end, and then I push and lift left foot underneath, stepping into the downward facing dog, and then just give the downward dog some movement here. Oil it out, get nice and fluid, notice how you're feeling today, don't judge what you're feeling, just try and stay neutral, neutral space of awareness, just allowing things to be as they are. <sighs> okay, inhale, lift up onto your tiptoes, pull your belly in round all the way forward, come into a high plank position. 
Exhale, land your knees on the mat. And then we'll take some hip circles from here. And then you can play around with how big you want these circles to be through the hips. If you want to flirt with the back bend, you can. But you know, if, it's, if you're kind of feeling a bit sensitive today or a little bit tight, a little bit sore, take it easy because we'll come through this movement again. Okay. Lovely. And then when you're ready, you need to press all the way back into a downward facing dog. Good. Inhale, lift up onto your tiptoes, start to kind of bounce through your knees. <sighs> Using that bounce, inhale, round all the way forward to a high plank. And then exhale, sweetly melt the pelvis towards the wrist, draw the shoulders back. Send your heart forward, keep your legs strong, your glutes engaged. And then bend into your elbows so you start to lift and lower, bending in and out of the elbows. Good, and we're just gonna use that to kind of turn the gaze over each shoulder so that we just deepen the opening through the front body. If it doesn't feel good or you need support for your lower back, take your knees down. Good, and then when you're ready, press it all the way back into your downward facing dog. In your downward facing dog, find that bounce through your knees again. Plug your left toes, keep your right knee bouncing in and out. Bend the knee, push from the toes, set the left foot forward in between the hands. Good, feel really grounded in that left foot and the back leg is strong as well. When you feel grounded, inhale, the arms lift up. Good, and I'm gonna have a bounce here. Okay, so on your exhale, take a lean over towards the left, right fingertips to the sky. And then continue to sweep forward and round. We're going to turn towards the top of the mat. Good. And then inhale, arms lift all the way up. Good. Exhale, transition into a warrior three. Shift the weight into your right foot. Just take a moment to breathe in the balance. Lovely. Bend into your right knee, slowly lower your toes behind, inhale, high lunge. Lovely, exhale, lean forward, we're going to sweep it back to the back of the mat. The right hand is tracing, we place the right hand to the top right corner and then continue to turn the toes all the way around to the left, sinking through the hips. And again, just taking a, a moment here to allow the hips to open. Good, inhale, push up through your pelvis, turn your toes back round to the right side of the mat, and then from here, left elbow crosses on top of the right. So bend in that left knee, and coming into Garudasana arms, either holding the shoulders or twist wrapping the forearms, so don't lose the cross of the elbows. And then pushing into that left heel, inhale, lift all the way up through the elbows, and then exhale, sink down and round. And we're gonna make big circles, shifting the weight through the heels of the feet the most. Inhaling, gathering the core, lifting the elbows high. Exhaling, dropping down, but keeping the heels grounded to protect your knees, lovely. One more big circle. Remember that your toes can turn with you. You don't have to stay still. Good. And then from here, as we're lifting all the way up, we're going to turn towards the top of the mat, untangle the arms, and then transition back into the balance, this time fingertips to the ground. Exhale, bend both of your knees and sink left knee behind your right heel, land your hips down all the way to a seated position. If this is too deep for you, you can straighten your base leg, your left leg. Otherwise, and I mean too deep, it means that you're leaning and your right sit bone isn't grounded. If your right sit bone is grounded, you can keep the knee bent. Let's bring it into a twist. Hug yourself with your left elbow around that right knee, and then use that to hug and lift and grow your spine. You can support that lift of your spine with the right hand behind, and then just taking the breath to go deeper.
Lovely. One more inhale. And one more exhale. Good. And then bring it back to centre. Untangle the legs. And we're going to take it down all into our diamond pose again. So finding your seat, finding your block if you need it. And then just taking a moment to close the eyes. And notice the relationship to your internal world now. Has it, has it kind of changed since the beginning of your practice? What's your experience of being in your body in this moment? Lovely. Let's begin again with the breath. So finding that lovely, supportive, sustainable rhythm of breathing. And then when you're ready, we'll take it into the side reaches. So this time we'll place the right fingertips down, the left fingertips reach up. We'll do a couple of these, reaching forward and round to each side. So you've just got this beautiful sway and lengthening coming through the side body and the spine. Lovely. And then this time when you're ready, we're going to shift the heels to the right side of the hips. So I'll kind of have my back to you. So the, we take it now into the shoulder drops. So just lowering left shoulder, right shoulder through the center. And you can take it as low as you feel comfortable to do so. Or maybe you just stay lifted and you're just allowing the shoulder blades and that shift of weight through the hands to feel into the thoracic twist. Yeah, have a play around. Lovely. And then when you're ready, again, you can have the challenge without using the hands. We're going to inhale up through the center. You can shift the weight onto your sit bones. You can use your hands behind you here. And then we're going to lengthen the feet forward. And we're going to come back to the octopus. So you turn the toes out to the side and then start to circle them in towards one another. Let that movement ripple up through the legs and into the spine. And you get the kind of a behind picture from me now. So you can see how it's kind of similar to the spinal wave action. Lovely. Have a few more breaths in this movement. And then when you're ready, you're going to shift the weight to your sit bones and take it into a wobble. And make your movements really random and engage through the fingers and the toes so that everything is alive in this wobbly core action. <laughs> okay, and then when you're ready, we're going to land left foot to the ground so the left knee is bent and the right leg is long. Okay, and then we just give yourself a hug. So you ground your left sit bone down, hugging around that left knee, grow the spine towards the sky. And grow the sit bones down into the center of the earth. So you're lengthening and elongating in opposite directions. <sighs> Lovely. Okay, so we're going to take the downward dog towards the back of the mat, hands reach up and over. You push into your left foot and you sweep your right foot underneath. 
And then you'll be in a downward facing dog towards the back of your mat. Good. When you're ready, inhale, lift up high onto your tiptoes, round all the way forward into a high plank, and then exhale slower than you want to, lower your knees to the ground. But hover them off the ground like a centimetre. And once they're hovering off the ground a centimetre, hug your tailbone towards the back of your heels. Push your hands straight down and broaden your shoulder blades away from your spine. And then land your knees down and take them nice and wide on your mat and circle through your hips. A couple of circles in each direction. Good. When you're ready, slink it all the way back to a downward facing dog. Inhale, lift up high onto your tiptoes. Exhale, find a bounce through your knees. Good. And then spring them round all the way forward into a high plank. Keep looking to your navel as you watch your pelvis land towards your wrists, upward facing dog. Bend your elbows and just gently gaze over right shoulder and the left shoulder. Legs stay strong. Land the knees if you need to. And again, just find that twist and opening through the front body. Good, and then when you're ready, slink it all the way back again into downward facing dog. You might like to take a cleansing breath to release there. But when you're ready, lift it back up onto your tiptoes and then this time we're gonna send the right foot forward. So the left knee stays springing. You bend the left knee, you push from the toes and you step the right foot forward. Get really grounded through the feet here. So then when you inhale, you're rising from stability. Lovely. And then exhale, take a lean towards the right. Their fingertips reach tall. And then sweep forward and round. And we're going to sweep it forward and round towards the top of the mat. And as we inhale, the arms come up. And then exhale, lean into your warrior three, shifting the weight forward into your left foot, back toes lifted. Having a moment to just feel into the stillness of your balance. Good, sweetly bending into the left knee, lower the belly down, land the toes behind you, inhale, the arms lift up. Exhale, left fingertips are gonna trace Across the mat, so we go to the butt towards the back again. Place the left hand to the top left corner and then turn the toes to the right. As your toes turn to the right, you can sink your hips. You might need to move this right foot. I'm just going to stay here and breathe into that hip opening. Lovely. And then when you're ready, we lift the pelvis back up. And as I turn the toes back round to the left, I'm crossing the right elbow on top of the left. Holding the shoulders or twist wrapping the forearms to find Garudasana arms. And then pushing into that right heel, inhale, lift the elbows up towards the sky. We've got three big circles again. Exhaling down into the hips, bending the knees, keeping the heels grounded to shift the weight through the strongest part of the legs, the back of the legs. The inner thighs. So if I'm too much in the toes, it's going to be knee dominant. And I really want the bigger muscle groups, hamstrings and glutes to support this movement. So please keep the heels down. Don't worry about flexibility. You always want flexibility supported with strength. Okay, when you're ready, inhale the elbows up to the sky. Then we're turning toes, pelvis, forward. Shifting the weight forward into warrior three legs, untangling the arms and bringing the fingertips to the ground. Lovely. And then exhale, bending knees, placing the right knee behind the left heel. Landing the shin bone, landing the hips down. And we've got the twist. And again, if you need to sink the hips down, you can straighten the right leg. Okay, give yourself a hug with your right elbow. Let that grow you, lift you, and then support your lift, left hand behind. And then just twisting with the breath. Navel drawing in to 
Ring it out through the abdominal wall. Left shoulder drawing back in towards the back of the heart. And then the gaze, just leading with your gaze. Let your body follow the gaze all the way around. Lovely, one more breath in. One more breath out. And then bringing it back to centre. Good, okay. I'm back in the diamond shape, you might like to be so as well, but be in a comfortable seated position, just take a moment to re-arrive. Can you tune in to your energy body? And the subtle language of this vibrational body. We sometimes feel it as tingles or sensations and just tuning in, tuning into your energy, how it feels for you to occupy space. So we're going to go through that sequence again and we're going to add on a bit of the standing flow. If you felt like that was enough of a flow for you, you could end it there and just come into Shavasana now. If you're going to stay with me, then we're going to take it into the side reaches and leans. So begin again with breath, inhaling, lifting up through the crown of the head, lifting up through your right fingertips and then exhaling, taking a lean to the left. Good, we'll do a couple of sweeps forward and round. And then we transition this into a forward fold. So this time now the body's a bit warmer, we can just ask for a bit more stillness in these um, deeper openings. So for me it's really about allowing the body to relax into this shape. I'm not forcing, I'm not pulling, I'm not trying to go deeper. But rather just focusing on a sense of letting go. We use the breath to aid that release. Lovely, one more breath here. And then sliding yourself back up. We're going to pick up the feet and shift them to the left side. So you're back in your diagonal pigeon. And then again, just separating the hands nice and wide. And we'll take the shoulder drops into the centre. And you're just noticing how things feel this round. Now we've come through a bit of repetition. Lovely. And then from there, reach your fingertips forward. This time, keep looking to your navel, your torso is low. Pull the navel in and keep, try to keep the biceps with the ears as you lift all the way up. Good, we're gonna take one circle with arms by the ears to activate through the core. As you come back up and round, shift the weight onto your sit bones, that's the challenge. Lengthen the feet forward. And then come straight into your octopus movement. So turning the toes out, circling them forward and round, rippling that up through your legs and your spine. And it's kind of like a um, reverse rowing action through the arms. Okay, and then this time we're going to come into a forward fold, but rather than making it a Paschimottanasana, just bring the hands to somewhere comfortable and then let yourself soften. So don't obsess about taking your head down, but rather just be in a space where you could be for 20 minutes. 
and let everything simmer down through a cleansing breath. We're going to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Lovely. And then slowly walk the hands back up the legs. Bring the right foot into the hips. And then we're going to take a forward fold. So we're going to bring the right shoulder on the inside of the right knee. Reach the right hand behind. You may, you may stay here, just leaning the heart forward and using the left hand for support. You may be able to find a bind with the left hand behind. You're going to take an inhale, lift up through the chin and the chest. And then exhale, push the right knee back and lean the heart forward towards that left leg. Good, inhale, lift halfway. And then exhale, push it back and lean forward. Keep your left heel grounded. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, reach the heart forward. Good. Inhale, lift up through your fingertips. Exhale, take your hands to your, the back of your mat. Push into your right foot, lift your left leg, sweep it underneath, downward facing dog. Good. Inhale, round forward, high plank. Exhale, pelvis to wrists, wave in vinyasa. Good. Micro bend your elbows, take a gaze over each shoulder. If you want to go deeper, you can drop your heels to the opposite direction that you're looking. So look over the left shoulder, drop the heels to the right. Keep bending the elbows so you're not dumping the weight into your joints. Grip your fingertips so you strengthen through the wrists and the forearms. Land your knees if it's too much. Lovely. Sweep it back into a downward facing dog when you're ready. Take a breath there. Okay, inhale, lift up onto your tiptoes, bounce through your legs, we're springing the left foot forward, bend right knee, push from the toes, left foot steps forward, inhale, high lunge. Exhale, take a lean over to the left. Sweep it forward and round, take it to the top of your mat. Inhale, arms lift up, toes are turned with you. Exhale, into warrior three. Good. Pause in the warrior. And then bend the knee, lower the belly down to land the toes delicately behind you. Inhale the arms, lift up. Exhale, right fingertips trace along the mat. Find the back of the mat, find the top right corner and then turn your toes to the left. Sink your hips. Good, same as we did before. If you want more this time, you can start to push that left knee out a bit wider. So I've got my hand on the inside of the left thigh, not on the knee, just above. And I'm just placing pressure. Good, one more breath here. And then as we come back, we lift the hips, left arm reaches up. I turn the toes, I cross the left elbow on top of the right. And I'm sinking into Skandhasana to find Garudasana arms. My left heel is grounded. So push from that left heel up and lift up through the elbows. And then take it down and round. And again, emphasizing you keep the heels grounded to support the movement. One more big circle. And then we're going to use this one, this circle, to turn to the top of the mat. So you lift up and over through the elbows, the turn, toes turn to the top of the mat, and then I'm shifting the weight into uh, Warrior Three with Garudasana arms. Lovely. And then from here, I'm going to find Eagle posture. So I'm going to bring the left knee forward. And then cross it over the right knee if you can, tuck your toes and then sink the hips all the way down. Breathe there, focus on a steady point. Good, inhale, lift all the way up. Separate the arms and then sweetly step the left toes behind 
Reach down through your right fingertips, up through your left. Take it into a side lean. Good. And then bring it back. Cross the left ankle over the edge of the right thigh. Stick the hips out into a flying pigeon. Good. Inhale, lift. The challenge here is to sit down without the hands. If you need the hands, take them. We're going to take the left knee behind that right heel. So the toes land, the knee lands, the shin bone lands, and then the hips land. And then we can come into the twist. Ground the sit bones, hug with the left elbow, lengthen through the spine, and then take the right hand behind. Breathe into the twist. One more breath here. And then bringing it back. Good. And then this time we're just going to add on a hip opener. So I'm going to stack the right knee on top of the left knee. If you need the hips up on a block, you can do so. And then I'm going to bring the heels forward. This is going to deepen this. So making sure again the hips are grounded. And rather than the heels being back, you, you can do that if you want, but if you want to go a bit deeper into the hips, have the heels a bit further forward. And then take an inhale, lift up through the crown of your head, draw your shoulders slightly back, let your chest open and then start to inch your heart beyond your knees. So I'm going to keep the chin lifted for length through the spine until I meet that resistance and then I can relax the head down. As I meet that resistance, I'm going to greet it with the breath in the body. I'm just trying to really soothe the gripping and resistance that I can feel. Soothe it through longer exhales. Take one more breath here. And then bring it back. Okay, lush. Separate the legs. You can come back to the diamond seat. and We've got one more round. When you're ready to begin again, take it into your side reaches and leans. <sighs> This round I'll just do slightly less instruction so that you kind of um, tune into where you're going just from repetition. So I won't leave you but I will just nudge rather than direct. So when you finish with these side reaches and leans we're taking it into stillness in a forward fold. Allowing the breath to travel through the back body now. Good. When you're ready, rise it back up. Shift the heels to the right side of the hips. And then take it into your shoulder drops. So for me, I can really feel a lot more um, movement. I can access a lot more movement in the upper back now. And that feels really nice in the twist. Good, okay, find the center, gaze towards your navel, pull your navel in towards your spine, lengthen your fingertips forward, biceps with the ears, and then inhale, rise. We'll do one circle towards the left. And then as we come back up and round, I'm shifting the weight to the sit bones, sending the feet forward, and then taking it straight into octopus. And I'll do a few of these octopus movements before coming into um, stillness. 
just in that really passive forward fold. So I don't want to go too deep, I'm just landing. Not landing and then inching forward, I'm just landing in the available, the readily available position that my body, my body offers me. And then letting the breath soften. Lovely, and then rounding back up when you're ready, bringing your left heel in towards your sit bone, and then dropping your left shoulder on the inside of the left knee. I use the right hand to push an inch the heart forward to wrap the left arm behind, around and behind. And then if you can, you can take hold of the bind holding onto the right wrist. If you've got that bind, take an inhale, lift halfway, and then exhale, push the left knee back and inch the heart forward. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, push the knee back, lean the heart forward. Good, and again, inhale, halfway. And exhale. Inhale, lift all the way up, release your bind. Exhale, take your hands to the back of your mat. Push into your left foot, lift your right leg, sweep it underneath, downward facing dog, facing the back. Inhale, lift up through your heels, round forward through your spine, high plank. Exhale, pelvis to wrist, upward facing dog, draw shoulders back as the pelvis lands. Keep the legs strong, bend the elbows, take the heels to the right, look over left shoulder, change it round. Remember, land your knees if this feels weird. You shouldn't be able to feel anything in the back, anything in the spine. So if you're feeling any kind of compression, back off. Good. And then when you're ready, sweep it all the way back, downward dog. Stay high on your tiptoes, bounce to your knees. We're going to spring the right foot forward. So pushing from the left toes, when you're ready, right foot comes forward. Ground, and then inhale, arms up, high lunge. Exhale, take a lean to the right. Sweep left fingertips forward and round all the way to the top of your mat. Inhale, arms up, high lunge. Exhale, slowly shift into your warrior three. Breathe there. Good, bend the left knee, lower the belly down to land the toes delicately behind you. Inhale, the arms lift up. Exhale, left hand traces across the mat, finds the back, top right, top left corner, turn the toes to the right. Sink the hips, if you're going deeper, push the knee out wider, but don't move the foot. If you move the foot away, that makes it not as deep. Good, one more breath. And then we're finding the Garudasana arms. So we lift the hips, right fingertips reach over, turn the toes back to the left, cross the right elbow over the left, find your Garudasana arms, push into your right heel, lift your elbows to the sky, lift it up and over, and then exhale down and round. Good, two more big circles. Let the breath support the movement. Let the feet move with you as well. Lovely, one more circle. And this one will lead us to the top of the mat. Elbows lift all the way up and over, toes turn, and then shifting into the balance. Back toes float, stay with the Garudasana arms, and then we'll sweetly move into eagle posture. So bringing the right knee forward, crossing the right knee over the left, wrapping, the toes, if you can, sit the hips down, find the stillness and just feel the aliveness that is contained within the stillness of your balance. 
Good, let's unwrap this into the ballerina stance. So untangle the arms, untangle the right leg, step the right toes behind the left, reach the left fingertips down, and then reach up through the right arm. Get the breath in there. Good, and then sweetly transition into standing pigeon. Crossing right ankle over the edge of the left thigh, stick the hips out, lean the heart forward. Good, and then slowly, slowly pick it back up. And then you can challenge yourself to do this without the hands. So the right knee, the right toe step behind, like we were going into the ballerina again. And then the right knee lands, and then the hips land. Good, and then come into your twist. And let the breath guide you here. Lovely, one more. Good, and then as you come back, we'll take it into this. <laughs> Shoot, I think maybe a shoelace, I don't know. This, this shape. We're gonna have the heels forward if you wanna go deeper into the hips or have them heels back if you want a little less. Okay, and then lift, grow your spine, shoulders draw back, heart draws forward, and then exhale, lengthening. Imagine your heart was going to reach beyond your mat. And then when you feel that resistance, let the breath speak to the resistance. It's like the breath speaks the language of the body. The mind doesn't really do that. The mind just rambles on its own. But the breath knows the body really well. And it feeds the body what it needs. So the breath can also comfort the body when the body is uncertain. And it can be uncertain when it comes into these kind of deep openings. It's like, hey, what, what's happening? That's a really unusual position for me to be in. And the breath comes along and says, it's okay. It's, it, we're meant to be here. So you have to have that intention of allowing the breath or moving the breath deeper deeper than where you think it goes, just to the, the base of the lungs. It goes much, much further than that. And allow yourself to receive the effects of the breath. Acknowledge how it's supporting you. Lovely, when you're ready to release, you can come back. Release the hands behind you and shake out the legs. Just give the legs a shake out. I'm going to grab a blanket because it's cold today. Um, but you can get yourself comfortable. We're going to have a Shavasana now, making your way onto your back. And you know, when you get to your back, you may feel like, oh, I just, I need to just do something else. I need to just maybe hug the knees in or take a twist. I don't know, or if you're feeling really feisty, you can go into a back bend. But if you're anything like me today, you'll just want to relax. So you can get really comfortable. Take up space. Everything occupies space. So you should too. Occupy as much space as you feel comfortable to. Yeah? Just take the legs wide, take the 
arms wide, give the shoulders a wriggle. Just make sure that you're not fighting um, fidgets to be still. Make sure the fidgets are gone, get them out. So that you can really allow yourself to drop full more fully. There's nothing you're resisting to be here. And if you can stay longer, then stay longer. Always stay longer in Shavasana if you can. If you're coming back, allow a deeper breath to bring you back into your body. And then give some movement to the fingers and the toes and the wrists and the ankles. And find a stretch that feels good. You can roll to your side when you're ready. That's comfortable for you. And then keeping your eyes soft or closed, just gently make your way back to a seated position. Hmm. And with your eyes closed, just use these final moments to receive. Receive how you feel in your body in this moment. <laughs> it always comes for the good stuff. And then if it's comfortable for you, you can bring your hands to prayer in front of your heart and just take a bow towards your heart space. In a moment just to drop into the vibration of gratitude. Maybe noticing the first thing that arises when you come into gratitude. And giving thanks for that. Okay, thank you. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. Uh, have a wonderful day. You okay now? You okay now? You okay now?